Hi, Mr. President. Yemi Shalsender with PBS NewsHour. Um, on the campaign trail, you called yourself a nationalist. Some people saw that as emboldening white nationalists. Now people are also saying that saying the that president... That's such a racist there question. are some people that say that now the Republican Party is seen as supporting white nationalists oh, because of your rhetoric. What do you make of that? I don't believe it. I, just, well, I don't know. Why do I have my highest poll numbers ever with African Americans? Why do I have among the highest poll numbers with African Americans? I mean, why do I have my highest poll numbers? That's such a racist question. Honestly, I mean, I know you have it written down and you're going to tell me. It's a racist question. And Mr. President, I'm I love, you know what the word is? I love our country. I do. You go, you have nationalists, you have globalists. I also love the world. And I don't mind helping the world. But we have to straighten out our country first. We have a lot of problems. Your, your language and how you approach the coronavirus at the beginning. I interviewed someone said that his family got sick, they went to a funeral um, in mid-March. And they said mainly because the president wasn't taking it seriously. He's like, if, I, if the president had had a mask on, if he was saying we should stay home, then I would have stayed home. Well, he said I, I have I, family I members. And just, I wanna, the, 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 he said his family members were sick and because they were but they were listening to you. And do you feel like, or are you concerned that downplaying the virus maybe got some people sick? A lot of people love Trump, right? A lot of people love me sick all the time, right? I guess I'm here for a reason, you know? To the best of my knowledge, I won. And I think we're going to win again. I think we're going to win in a landslide. But just so you understand, you're talking about March, right? And yet, excuse me, excuse me, I, know, I understand. And yet in January, a certain date, you know, the date better than I do, we put on a ban of China where China can't come in. Nancy Pelosi was having... She wanted to have a street party in Chinatown in San Francisco at the end of February. That's a month later. And then they tell me it's only a political talking point, but you feed into it because you're too good a reporter to, to let that happen. Really, you are a good reporter. You're too good a reporter to let that happen. said repeatedly that you think that some of the equipment that governors are requesting, they don't actually need. You said New York might need, that I, I might not need 30,000. You said it on I Sean Hannity. the media anymore. My that's question why is, how is that going to impact? You hear me. That's why you used to work for the Times and now you work for somebody else. Look, let me tell you something. Be nice. Don't Mr. Be President, my question Don't is... Don't be threatening. Be nice. Go my ahead. question is... We put on a ban because I was reading bad things about China. World Health Organization should have told us. But I was reading it with or without them. They should have known. All they had to do was read it. They didn't have to even be there. But they tried to cover up for China. World Health covered up for China. Rallies in February and in March. And there are some Americans. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about rallies. I really don't know about rallies. I know one thing. I haven't left the White House in months, except for a brief moment to give a wonderful ship the comfort. In March. And I hold a rally. I'm sorry, I hold a rally. How you fill these orders for ventilators or for masks? Yeah, you're not going to impact We're producing at all. tremendous numbers of ventilators. We're doing a great job on it. Mike Pence, our vice president, has headed up the task force, which has been incredible. The job they've done. We have everybody in the White House working on it. We have everybody in the country is working on this in one way or the other. You said that you don't take responsibility, but you did disband the White House pandemic office and the officials that were working in that office left the administration abruptly. So what responsibility do you take to that? And the officials that worked in that office said that you that the White House lost valuable time because that office was disbanded. What do you make of that? Well, I just think it's a nasty question because what we've done is, uh, and Tony had said numerous times that uh, we saved thousands of lives because of the quick closing. Uh, and when you say me, I didn't do it. Uh, we have a group of people. I could, I could ask perhaps the administration, but I could perhaps ask uh, Tony about that because uh, I don't know anything about it. I mean, you say you say we did that. I don't know anything about it. You don't know anything about the organization that happened in the national security administration. Perhaps they do that. You know, people let people go. You used to be with a different newspaper than you are now. You know, things like that happen. But this that at, at
at one point that you thought more people might die from the economic tragedies and the economic problems in America due to the coronavirus outbreak. What health officials are telling you that? And Dr. Fauci, could you speak to that, the idea that there might be mental health and suicide related to this with that outpace at some point, the virus's impact on this society? Well, Thank you. Yes, Dr. Dr. Fauci to come up, but it's common sense. You're going to have massive depression, meaning mental depression. You're going to have depression in the economy also. But you're going to have mental depression for people. You're going to have large numbers of suicides. Take a look at what happens in a really horrible recession or worse. So you're going to have tremendous suicides, but you know what you're going to have more than anything else? Drug addiction. You will see drugs being used like nobody's ever used them before. And people are going to be dying all over the place for from drug addiction. One day, they're at the top of their business, they're celebrity chefs. They've got the most successful restaurants. And in one day, they have nothing. They've gotten wiped out one day from our enemy, this invisible, horrible scourge. So when you ask me that, it's, it's so easy to figure that. I mean, massive drug use, massive depression, mental depression, massive numbers of suicide. Uh, Anxiety causes, you know, disease, they say. A lot of people, are, you're going to have tremendous. And hopefully we're not going to have that because hopefully by what we're doing, we get the best of both worlds. We don't have 2.2 million deaths. We have a, a number that's much less, much, much less.